Hi, Oliver. Hi, Chris. Hi. Thanks for joining in. Um, let's wait for a few minutes. <laughs> I'll just go and ask, uh, just go and ask folks to join in also on our tag channel. Hello. Hello. Hi, Vijay. Hi, Lolita. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you? Good, good. Just dropping my kid at school and heading back home. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and we are just uh, waiting for a couple more minutes to uh, for folks to join, and then uh, we can get started. We had a few items. Uh, if there are other items, again, uh, just please... Feel free to add them in. I can share the link to the doc. All right, we have Chris too. Hi, Chris. Good Hello. morning. How are you? I'm awake. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here again. No. <laughs> it was actually uh, pretty nice to meet folks in person in, uh, at KubeCon. So I think that that was super exciting. We had a lot of good good discussions, hallway discussions as well as talks. So. Uh, I think it's always nice to kind of have, um, you know, the uh, the uh, positive overload after you know <laughs> being immersed in in lots of technical talks and and discussions at at in in real life on conf in conferences. <laughs> so I think uh, also the uh, uh, I was just seeing uh, that CNCF has started posting all the videos of the talk sessions so those are now available on the youtube channel uh for for kubecon you all right let me just share we can get started again uh we have a few topics again folks please feel free to add i can share the other our doc on screen Again, I think um, some of the areas that we just uh, wanted to cover, again, this uh, meeting is um, you observe the CNCF code of conduct. So please uh, take a look at it if you haven't already. Uh, with that said, 
again, uh, just wanted to, I had a few items on the list, but again, uh, would love to ha encourage anybody else if you have any questions or any comments or any discussion items that you'd like to see, um, you know, please, please uh, feel free to mention. Um, I think uh, we can get started with the KubeCon EU um, sessions. We had a tag update session where actually Chris uh, Larson was also um, attending in person. So I invited to him uh, and we both co-presented uh, on the uh, on uh, not only giving a tag update, but also um, being able to deep dive and uh, address a lot of the questions and um, interest that folks had uh, around the common query language spec workgroup. And the um, <clears throat> Chris, did you want to give a quick update on some of the questions that you know folks had and the excitement? It was a pretty full house. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some kind of an echo, Chris. Uh, maybe it might be because uh, your microphone might be. Yeah, I don't have a good headset with me. No worries, no worries. I mean, maybe you can increase the volume. <laughs> sure. Yeah, or if I decrease it here, see if that's better. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, Good. There are a couple questions around how they could participate, and also um, some concerns about the process and what the ultimate output is going to be um, from the working group. And then just chatting with other people informally, um, like chatting with Toten there, um, he had some good advice about uh, just focusing on the, the research and the work, and then if politics come up, um, there are a lot of leaders like you know Leda and others help us out with that. Um, but that sounds good. Now we're just waiting on the uh, TOC. Yes, yes. So uh, I think, you know, just uh, to, um, uh, Chris is being modest here, but there were a lot of end users also from the European community who were uh, super interested. We had quite a full house uh, at the EU session. And uh, uh, again, uh, there was a, fair bit of uh, discussion around, you know, uh, pros and cons of defining a uh, common query language, what the use cases are, you know, why would somebody need it versus not. So lots of debate or discussion, which is all good uh, and very healthy for, you know, the work group to actually start off uh, on. And uh, we all have had these discussions, you know, in different groups and teams over time. Um, so super exciting to see that energy. There are a lot of uh, <clears throat> engineers from different vendors also who are working on different open source projects who are interested in participating. Uh, Red Hat, Google, um, and uh, others from Light Lightstep and other observability vendors have been pretty involved. So uh, good to see that energy. And I think um, as Chris mentioned, we are uh, waiting for the TOC to <clears throat> review our uh, request for the official starting of a kick starting of a work group. Um, I think uh, Chris and Vijay, we might want to actually follow up with the uh, TOC liaison so that uh, we can, uh, you know, kind of make sure that this is on their radar and we get that signed off. Um, did you uh, speak with one of the TOC liaisons by any chance or on, on Slack or otherwise? Not yet? Not yet, but I did see that Emily um, posted to the TOC comment or the uh, PR there to have those liaisons take a look. Yes. Um, so give them a day and then, you know, maybe, maybe we should, um, did she tag them? Okay, okay, super, super. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this will get uh, signed off to the suite, and then we can actually start towards uh, having, you know, an actual work group. Um, going from there, again, Chris and Vijay and others, did you have a timeline that you wanted to, that is, what is the cadence of which you want to kind of run the work group discussions on? Is it, uh, are you thinking weekly or biweekly? What, what works for you? I think just weekly, 
should be fine. I don't want to okay. Find out a lot of or Maybe a weekly hour or a weekly um, 45 minutes? Yeah, weekly, probably an hour. Really good. Okay. Just wait for yeah, I mean, because again, I think it's good to kind of have that uh, in mind as we set this up um, and also considering, you know, some of the logistics such as um, should we do it on an EU friendly time or alternate between EU and APAC. It depends on, you know, the interest, because I think there were some uh, end users from uh, APAC also who were interested in this. Um, again, there was some discussion. Um, so we might consider um, rotating that. But again, these are just considerations uh, on time zone, et cetera, for participation. And is anyone uh, attending the KubeCon in China? Uh, uh, from Shanghai? I know the CFP is out. Um, we should find out, though, for sure. Any any of uh, folks here who are planning to attend again? Um, it's too early, I think, <laughs> to tell because it's September. And then the other thing really is that you know uh, Chicago is right around the corner after that in November. So it's it's I I think it might be a bit too hectic to go back to back on. Uh, these conferences. So uh, I think one of the things we might want to aspire to uh, as we kickstart the working group and kind of deep dive into this area to perhaps, you know, have some, uh, air, you know, components that we want to accomplish on the working group, similar to the KHS observe working group that we've had over time uh, to be able to, you know, discuss that uh, and leverage the Chicago uh, meeting. Right, so um, again, uh, worth worth thinking about uh, and going from there. I also wanted to call out that the in the the in uh, the KubeCon EU discussions, the project meetings again, there was a um, uh, for those of you who may have attended it or not. I think that it was recorded, but I'm not sure. Um, I'll definitely share a link for open telemetries project meeting, which is always, you know, uh, pretty well attended. Um, there was some discussion around the query language uh, working group and uh, quite a lot of interest. So again, it's great to see that uh, different project communities are, you know, super interested in uh, working towards this, um, this goal. And there's a lot of expectations, so <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> All right. Uh, other than that, anybody else had any comments on KubeCon EU uh, sort of discussions? I think all the videos will be out if they are already posted, actually. Uh, so I'll share the links as we get them. Um, any questions, comments? All right, let's move on then. Uh, we also had a quick, just this is just again, just reporting. Uh, we also had a TOC update earlier this morning. Uh, a couple of areas that did uh, come up that we gave an update on. Uh, I provided an update on, of course, the Q, uh, EU sessions and the query language working group. Uh, and that's where, you know, we were kind of told that the TOC is working on reviewing the request and approving it. Uh, but there was also another area that in, uh, was uh, brought up, which was the um, discussion around observability projects, uh, project communities and community health. Uh, and as many of you who are, you know, who've been involved in the projects as well as the space, um, over time, again, uh, especially in the observability space, there's a lot of change happening. Uh, there are projects that, you know, again, maintainers um, who have been working on the projects long term um, decide to take a break or go do some other things. And, and so project metrics uh, was health uh, community metrics was an area that was discussed in the TOC. Uh, and um, I will open up an issue if you have you know, any comments on specific projects that you are working on. Um, Please, please, you know, feel free to um, discuss on that uh, issue. 
the TOC did request we open up an issue, um, requested the tag only open up an issue um, to discuss, right? And, and the tag contributor strategy, um, folks who are actually have some guidance on this uh, were also interested in participating. So just FYI, that's something that, you know, again, uh, would be useful for us given we have some really large projects, you know, which are used in the industry and end users uh, area very widely and uh, have continued to see some degradation in uh, maintainer uh, availability and maintainer mm -hmm. contribution. Oliver, did you have a comment? No, just nodded loudly. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, so again, would love to you know get feedback on what are some of the metrics that you consider are useful for being able to, of course, number and uh, diversity of uh, organizations, but also supporting our maintainers better on the projects. These are all issues that uh, you know affect uh, all projects over time, uh, and it's it's always. Uh, you know, uh, being able to be aware of that is the first step uh, to actually being able to support the projects themselves. Um, I think that's all I had uh, in terms of updates. Uh, did folks have other questions? Uh, Chris, did you want to discuss or Vijay uh, any areas on the uh, query language uh, discussion? What would you, do you have a blueprint in mind on what you would like to kind of kickstart uh, the discussions with. Um, yeah, I didn't have too much of an update. I think the initial one is that uh, we wanted to start capturing, you know, hold a meeting, get everybody on board and start uh, reaching out to everybody and start collecting the use cases and then the analysis for the uh, time series kind of breaking it down and doing interviews. So I think the initial one would be reaching out to those folks, the end user groups for those use cases and documenting them, pointing them at the repo. Um, and we'd have to get that set up under the tag uh, repo. And then um, we've already got uh, some good contacts with query developers. Um, that I met at KubeCon, mm -hmm. query language developers who uh, we want to interview. Some folks from Splunk and Datadog that we can interview, uh, the Prometheus folks, um, and the folks who create a prompt duo, um, and the Grafon Labs folks. So, um, I think we'll, I think one of the first steps too would be to draft some interview questions that folks could take and, you know, and we could shard out there. Cool, cool, cool. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a good start because I think that. Um, there are a lot of folks, as you said, who are interested. And um, I think that we had discussed on the doc itself um, that um, we wanted to kind of have some templates available for uh, you know folks to be able to kind of uh, weigh in their you know what work uh, what we should collect in terms of data and. Um, feedback and and then being able to automate that to share it uh, with you know end users through different project communities as well as through the tag and uh, other tags uh, if you will because uh, one of the interesting areas for example just uh, you know an allied area which is tag sustainability as uh, some of you you know who may have attended the tag meeting today as well as you know uh, follow those uh, the other tags, there is a fair bit of intersection with uh, some of the observability projects being used to measure, uh, you know, metrics and success for um, sustainability projects. So there are end users who actually overlap in some of these areas who actually could provide uh, some pretty interesting feedback on, you know, what, what a query language or, you know, would look like for them. And uh, what do they use the most in terms of feature sets um, as well as uh, specific uh, complexity in the type of data that they are uh, correlating or joining. Yeah, it sounds like they'd have a pretty interesting use case there, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah. they're eloquent. 
<laughs> yeah, I saw, you know, like uh, they were talking about the different uh, uh, areas where they kept calling out observability. And I was like, okay, maybe you know, there's some areas we can leverage into. <laughs> but lots of interest from also European uh, community users, which was very exciting. Um, anything else that folks had questions on? What are some of the projects that you're interested in? uh to see talks on i'm definitely very interested in getting your feedback uh are there specific areas that um you know we can kind of reach out to i'm happy to reach out to folks and um get them in to come and present maybe we can just off the top of your heads if there are some areas that are of burning interest to you <laughs> please uh please share For me personally, I know you work in the ML space, so I'm, leaning on. I'm kind of interested in the ML observability too, um, because we're spinning up an internal project at Netflix here to support our ML teams. Um, so yes, like see, yes uh, definitely. How that works. The, uh, totally, totally. I mean, that's a very good, uh, in fact, that's a very good area to which is uh, evolving very quickly because of, you know, just ML ops in, in, in general. Uh, and observability needed in that space, uh, but also, you know, as the um, related area of uh, LLMs and other, um, you know, larger language models develops, uh, again, model observability is a key area that is also of interest or, or evolving very quickly. So there are a whole bunch of tools and tool chains that are developing. Uh, and also best practices that are taken from observability that might be worth uh, going into. So good, good suggestion. Uh, Oliver, uh, I'll just go around the go around the team. <laughs> Any topics? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually coming from an end user group, and so of course I'm interested in everything that helps me to get managed or explain the management what is the the business benefit was it what is the return of uh, of invest or of observability because i mean you know uh, observability costs a lot of money yes and of course we need to justify why we do that uh, from a technical perspective that's no no question for me but from a management uh, perspective it's it's for me it's difficult uh, to get the right points do you do you mean management from a um uh, management of uh, that is communicating to upper management and leadership or do you mean uh data management i'm no, sorry because re re really the the business management so okay. The, okay. yeah okay so really you know what are the benefits that can be communicated clearly to mm -hmm. uh, leadership in order to, you know, ensure that observability is a first class citizen, right? Yeah. Because uh, often it's very easy for infrastructure or applications to be built and deployed uh, without really, you know, having observability first uh, approaches, right? In the design and in, in the way that um, often tool chains are just tagged on. So totally agree with you <laughs> out there. There's, there is a lot of need for that. Mm -hmm. um, that can be communicated. Any other areas, Vijay? Uh, any areas you'd like to see? Oh, yeah. Uh, there are actually a few. Uh, one is around... Uh the the person whom you had uh, quoted around uh, threading the line around uh, cost management um, i'd really like to bring that person over and uh, see what they have to say in terms of uh, uh, managing cost while providing the right uh, observability uh, or anyone who can give a good talk around that okay uh, great, great. sure uh, that is one um, real life use cases of uh, uh, tra tracing platforms that people have built out. Um, um, th there's still not a lot of knowledge uh, that's uh, out on the open on uh, how people are running massively scalable installations of tracing. Mm -hmm. It's usually we use 
product X or project Y, but the nitty gritty around it, uh, not not a lot of people have talked about. So that is another space that would be nice. Definitely, and and also best practices because I think that there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, uh, knowledge around what works at massive scale in implementations where tracing has been done. But as you also said, uh, it's relatively fewer in number, right? Compared to metrics, compared to logging, which have uh, infrastructure, which has been deployed for a long period of time. And uh, typically, you know, there are a whole set of guidelines that can be at least uh, shared with uh, developers out of the box, application developers, especially because um, uh, there is a gap. I feel uh, also personally that there is a gap between, you know, what um, application developers are assuming uh, in terms of what tracing can do for them and how it can be best leveraged for specific types of uh, feature tracing or uh, performance tracing versus um, everything, right? And and every single transaction that's traced. So um, totally agree. That's right. A, and uh, uh, to extend to that, uh, both from uh, an open telemetry point of view and from the backend point of view. Um, and there's there's a lot to be still talked about on how to run open telemetry at scale in an efficient, efficient manner. Uh, we don't have enough uh, people talking about how they're able to do that. Or uh, yeah. Yes, agreed, absolutely. And also, um, I would say, as you said, uh, open, uh, you know, how do you actually implement efficient tracing data stores? because um, uh, I think metrics is pretty well established at this point, logging is also, but uh, tracing is um, again, an evolving area. And I think that while uh, data stores, you know, which have existed, co columnar data stores and others, which are used for tr storing traces, um, there is a fair bit of <laughs> discussion still to be had if that's mo the most efficient or um, the most optimized. So totally agree. Uh, tracing data stores. Any others? Um, Chris, uh, did you want to share any topics that you had in mind, Ms. Hansen? Or Rin? Tony? I don't Chris? have anything specifically in mind. I, um, I'm always kind of interested in uh, sort of the responsibility of observability. Um, uh, let me qualify that. Uh, oftentimes, we rely on libraries for those things, and then that mm -hmm. becomes developer responsibility to maintain those over time. Whereas like in a service mesh scenario, it becomes part of the platform. Right. If I mm -hmm, if I'm mm -hmm, adding mm -hmm. things like traces and and via proxies and that sort of thing, and I don't know how well well that's understood. Like whose responsibility ultimately? And I guess it's an organizational decision, but it's always an interesting conversation to me. Yes, because I think you're right. I mean, uh, it depends on first of all where it sits, but it also is a full stack approach, right? I mean, I don't think that you can implement observability end to end without an end to end stakeholdership right that is you have application engineers as you said you have um platform engineers for you know some components and then you also have uh, a larger end to end vision that does uh, requires you know a handshake across different teams right so and right. and 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 engineering so that's uh, again, the, I think, as you said, there may be different scenarios, um, but definitely an interesting area because I think that does this go back also to being able to highlight that in discussions, you know, in your own org? Is that, would that be helpful? Well, yeah, I think it's just um, maybe a, just a point of confusion, like who, who should be doing it or like you said 
uh, that it should be a joint effort, not uh, us versus them. <laughs> sort yes, of thing. exactly, exactly. Right. Is that uh, is that a shared responsibility model, right? I mean, because right. I think that um, any of these areas, uh, and this applies the same for security also. Um, right. Is it is it a it is shared responsibility actually I feel um, but how that is implemented and uh, what the complexities are are always org specific. Sure. Sure. Totally. Totally. Rin, did you have any uh, suggestions or topics you would you'd like to see? Um. Not too much, I think. Uh, but a good one to consider is always uh, observability pipelines, observability stacks, uh, working with multiple kinds of observability tooling. And just an overview of uh, some of these stacks. Um, yeah, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to look at how how folks are choosing their stacks. Okay. So um, there, I, I think there are two ways to approach that. I just want to try to dig a little bit into this. Uh, one is that um, you could approach it from a criteria perspective. That is, what are the criteria that a um, team that is implementing observability or um, uh, continuing to add to their current stack, what are the criteria that they are using? for their choice, uh, making a choice or making an evaluation. And then there's the other side that, you know, what are the features that matter uh, that make that solution compelling? Is that is that what you're looking at? Or, um, or are you looking at it from an implementation perspective? Rin, any comments on that? Or are you looking at both? Sorry, I thought I had come off mute and was sitting here talking. Um, I think <laughs> both of them are pretty interesting. I think criteria is maybe more interesting from this group and given the rest of these topics are from more of a business perspective than a uh, implementation perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I'm just taking notes, so therefore, just asking. Uh, Tony, any any topics you'd like to see? Um, yeah, I think you know the the idea of uh, discoverability, um, mm -hmm. uh, whether with tracing and and uh, even metrics would be interesting. I think. It tends to it feels like a lot of the folks we work with tend to have issues I and mean, they have data but they, they tend to have issues around finding uh where problems are occurring so i think the idea of efficiently you know instead of oversampling um being able to discover issues whether um uh different approaches, you know, even with, I mean, the intersection of that with ML will probably be even interesting to find anomalies and tracing or, uh, mm -hmm. I think things like, things like that. If, if there's any, any teams out there doing any, any books on that, that'd be interesting to just kind of see how best practices and what folks are doing around, around that piece. So um, for triaging issues, right? I mean, you're you're basically saying for root causing yeah. issues. It just seems like at scale, you you tend to have so much data that you need to look through, and for any any team that has all this data, uh, mm -hmm. either they sampling the same set of things that where everything looks good, but the problem is they really need to find things where things have gone wrong. So being able to highlight what's gone wrong for them in a, mm -hmm. in a quick way would be 
would be good. Um, I'm not sure if, you know, I'm not sure if there's anything that does that automatically, but yeah, but it, it'd be good to, to like discoverability just seems like it's a little hard with observability at scale, at least. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And any strategies around that, I think would be good to see how other folks are thinking about it. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good call out because I think that this is one of the complex areas that how do you actually analyze the data that you're collecting and uh, storing because the mechanics of storage or uh, collection storage or um, presentation are you know addressed in in the standardized open source tools but um, uh, when it comes to actually applying analysis and being able to accelerate root cause uh, that's always a challenge right so root causing and triaging real time is always a challenge Right. Yeah. So good, good call out. All right. I think we have a pretty healthy set of topics. So really appreciate everyone uh, <laughs> jumping in to provide some feedback. Um, are there other areas that uh, you wanted to discuss today? I know we have about a few minutes, but I uh, just want to go around. I think I am at least, I don't have any other topics on my end. Uh, and I think we also have, just wanted to do a call out, we do have a speaker in the next uh, session who will be diving into a specific observability topic he has been working on. I'll get the topic and share it with you. He's been working on uh, graphs uh, and graphing for observability um, maps, and that should be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that Matt had already uh, suggested uh, and introduced Quinn uh, last time or uh, time before. Uh, so he, he will be presenting in the next session. So it should be pretty interesting. Any other topics folks had? Uh, maybe I throw just something in. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you need to see if it fits or not. Um, uh, sitting in the European Union, um, for us, it's always a, a big challenge to think about the data protection laws and uh, what that means for observability, especially when we talk about locks and, and traces and we collect uh, business metrics and with the business metrics uh, IDs and, and other things that could actually lead to, to trace down people. Um, that's of course more a legal discussion, but um, I, I think something, um, at least for the European um, users, it's it's really important uh, to look into that. Very good point. And I think uh, Oliver, that's um, uh, pretty important actually for any kind of global services because um, any, as you, as you said, you know, any data that is um, in, uh, compliant with EU um, uh, requirements needs to actually be able to um, apply that, apply those uh, compliance rules. And that does apply uh, to observability. Diff now, <clears throat> I would say in general, it uh, those, those uh, data privacy or data protection rules um, do are applied at a business level in terms of the applications or at the data store level itself, right? Because uh, typically analysis in organizations that have data from, you know, different areas uh, is not, uh, is pre-processed before being uh, running through your observability pipelines. So um, I think what you're alluding to is really what kind of pre-processing uh, guidelines or best practices technically exist, which are used. Is that is that what you're looking at? Are you looking at the technical implementation, or are you looking at what are some of the guidelines you need to be aware of? Yeah, it, it's it's actually both. Okay. Uh, so so I need to find out both. But uh, from from a practical experience, I mean. Uh, Often we have people that are responsible for the observability stack mm -hmm. and and uh, provide the observability stack, but we don't have really control what is going in. 
and programmers tend to be more lazy. So, I mean, one of the common issues that we have is that uh, just the whole message that the uh, customer types in goes into the log file or just the whole message that comes through some uh, Kafka or other uh, message broker is, is just locked completely. And um, if they put in credit card details, names, things like that, uh, you have basically uh, personal data in your observability data store that you need mm -hmm. to handle somehow. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I think that, um, again, depending on uh, I mean, there are several implementations uh, and best practice considerations that are applied, uh, but it's a good area to actually dive into. There are folks who are actively working on, um, again, GDPR compliance, for example, mm -hmm. which then intersects into pre-processing the uh, data that is uh, you know, being emitted from applications, for example, for observability and, and then that pre-processing is done before even it hits the rest of the pipeline, right? Yeah. So uh, no, good good suggestions because I think that's that's pretty, very practical and also very useful to understand. Um, it's a good good call out. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, again, if you have any experts in mind that you'd like, uh, you know, folks to come in and present that, please suggest, um, mm -hmm. but I'll also, uh, follow up. Good. Awesome. And I think last but not least, uh, Rin, uh, thank you for calling this out. Uh, the uh, KubeCon Chicago CFP is now open. <clears throat> so again, if you have specific areas or topics in mind, uh, please do start thinking about, uh, you know, uh, talk sessions that you can submit. Uh, also, I'm happy to help review uh, any proposals if you are, uh, if you want <laughs> a second pair or third pair of uh, eyes. Uh, so, uh, and then, you know, we can always uh, also discuss in the tag meetings if there are specific topics that, you know, we would like to kind of cover and pull in more talks on. But uh, Rin, thanks for calling this out. I think we're almost at time. So going, going once, any questions? Twice, all right, I think then I'll give you back a few minutes. Thank you again, everyone for joining in. Have a lovely day, bye. Bye.